Guys, it's the real deal. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, Polarium are bringing three new champions to patch 9.0. Um, we've got Commodus Dark Smile, who's a mythical. We've got um, Teox, who is a faction legendary. And faction le uh, legendaries are so hard to get. There's only a very small time frame that you can get them for specific events. So that's a little bit frustrating. And then we've got Diamant, Copper Coin who's a Void Legendary. So all three of these champions are going to be hard to get, but let's check them out anyway. You never know, you might pull one. So we're going to start with uh, Diamond, Copper Coin, Void Legendary. He will probably be the easiest one to get out of all three. Uh, he looks a little bit like Sloth from the Goonies. Uh, obviously, he must be the king of trolls with all that jewelry. Um, but yeah, really, you know, Polarium always kill it with their champions like... The artwork is just insane. Um, but yeah, dig it, dig it, dig in it, dig in it. But one thing that's a little bit annoying is we can't really see the chest. Oh, you know, they spent a lot of time on that. And I wanna I wanna look what's inside the box. What's inside the box player that you're hiding from us? But yeah, um, so aura increases ally speed in all battles by 20%. That's a nice aura. He actually has a base speed of 112. I think 115 is the fastest, so he's a very fast boy. I mean, for a big boy, he is very fast. Um, his passive, Kingpin. So it has a 50% chance to convert a debuff into a buff before it is placed on this champion. Works with the following buff. So decrease attack to increase attack. Decrease defense to increase defense. So a bit is similar to Amos. I like it. It's, it's, it's very interesting. The only problem that I see is increase attack, increase crit rate and crit damage. Kind of useless. He's a support champion and, you know, he's not a nuka. So increasing attack, increasing defense and crit rate, it's not going to help him. So, but increased defense and increased speed will help him, obviously. Defense is going to make him more tanky. Um, the increased speed will make him faster. So those are decent, but the other three kind of suck. So then we've got Protection Racket. I like it. So places three Inception stacks on a, a target ally. Oh, man, I thought that would be broken. I thought it was going to be on three allies, but it's on, so three stacks of it on an ally. It's on a three-turn cooldown as well. That is very good. So literally, you'll have some protected. So I'm just going to scroll down to um, Inception uh, because Inception, it is a new uh, buff to the game. So Intercept. So the intercept buff will block any attempts to place a crowd control debuff on a champion, even if it is specified in the enemy skill that the buff itself cannot be blocked. So this will protect you from any form of CC. I love it. It's like a stronger version of block debuffs. Um, I guess the only thing is that obviously poison, HP burn, and all that other stuff can get through. However, that is still really strong. That is very, very strong. We also places a 50% increased resistance buff and 25% strength and buff for on all allies for two turns. This is a really good ability. Um, increased resistance, not a lot of champions have that. And if you build like a, a strong resistance team for Arena, he can help you with that. Um, and also the strength, um, you know, it reduces damage that your team receive it is a very strong buff. Then we've got a charitable do uh, donation on the A2. Attacks one enemies, increases the duration of all uh, ally buffs by one turn. So he's a buff extender. Fills this champion's turn meter by 10%. Fills their turn meter by an additional 5% for each buff that has had its duration increased by this skill. Insane. So, you know, he's throwing out sort of... Uh, so that's across the board. So five champions, 10... 10 buffs plus the inception, 11 buffs by himself. Um, so yeah, 11 times five is 55 plus that 65 just by himself. And if you bring someone else in, he could easily, I don't know if player thought this through, but um, yeah, he could easily, you know, just constantly keep popping off, filling his own turn meter by a hundred percent. And that means you can cycle very quickly and probably share uh, the intercept on multiple 
allies. That's insane. And to be fair, just thinking of a build as well, like right now, just top of my head, I think a protection set would be really good in him to protect your buffs. Um, because he obviously he's throwing out a lot of buffs, so kind of makes sense to me. And I'd love you want to, you know, your intercept, you want that to be protected as well. So his A1, the hand of diamond, um, attacks all enemies. So it's an AoE hit, nice. So Hex could also be a good option for him as well. Um, heals all allies by 5% of this champion's max HP. Heals by an additional 2% of this champion's max HP for each enemy, sorry, for each buff on this champion. Nice. And there's no cap on that as well. This, this guy is broken. Plarium, and like, look at this as well. Plus 20% extra healing when fully booked. I don't think Polarium thought this one through. I mean, to me, I think this guy would be an absolute god in Hydra. Um, probably pretty good for like Go Second, Tanky, um, Arena Team as well. But I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below where you think he would be an absolute beast. So let's look at the Lizard Men next. So Teox. So his aura increases uh, allies' attacks in all battles by 30%. If you're a lizard man, it's 40%. Nice. Um, his passive. So survival all costs. Fills this champion's turn meter by 5% whenever an ally, sorry, whenever an enemy or an ally receives a debuff. Interesting. So obviously you bring someone with debuffs like a Lydia. Um, and this guy as well, I had to look at his kit earlier. He looks like he will be a boss for arena so yeah brings on like a lydia that's two buffs two, sorry two debuffs that's uh so two debuffs four champions that's eight 40 percent turn meter fill that's not bad at all if we could bring in some lizard men as well i mean to be fair lizard men used to be awful we've got low like lizard men has really changed since then lazarus pytheon uh, i mean even fushan's pretty decent barsatha is pretty good as well. Um, Necmo as well. Romantu, Krisk. So um, yeah, there's loads of good um, like champions you could bring in now for Arena. But yeah, if you can get three champions in, all allies are immune to sheep. Oh, that is what we've all been asking for. I mean, that is that's got to be my favorite of all time. We all know how annoying sheep is. But uh, let's go back to number one. So. Number one, so if you've got one lizard man, has a 25% chance to counterattack whenever an ally is attacked by an enemy under a debuff. So it sort of suggests you need to bring in someone with debuffs. Uh, if you've got two lizard men, if there are multiple champions on the team with this skill, this effect will only activate once. Decrease the damage this champion receives from enemies under debuffs by 50%, and the damage allies receive from enemy... For, uh, sorry, from enemies under debuffs by 20%. So decreases the damage this champion receives from enemies under debuffs by 50%. And then allies, so he's reducing the damage he receives by 50% and his allies by 20%. That is huge. That is massive damage and mitigation. Really like insane passive. Nice, like it. I do think though, actually think about it. One problem for faction champions are that in live arena they won't be so strong because it's very easy for people to sort of rob you of your awesome you know lizard men champions that's just how it is so is a3 wrath of the legion attacks all enemies before attacking places a 50 percent increased attack buff and 30 percent increased crit damage buff on this champion for two turns places an extra hit on the enemy under any debuffs Nice. So you've definitely got to bring in someone that's going to go before him, throwing out those debuffs. I think Ugo would be a good option. Not Ugo, Uko. Um, you know, being able to strip, throw out block debuffs. We're just going to get that extra damage and um that extra um like damage mitigation as well. So if we're bringing in um lizard men, we are getting ignore, strengthen, ally protection, and shields. Necmo, not Necmo. Um, oh my god, what is his name? Wow. Oh, guys, I just drawing blanks today. It's because I don't have him. It's been so long since I've seen him. What is his name? He's not undead. I th I'm sure he's undead. 
There we go. Necred. Not Necmo. Necred. That is a huge counter to Necred. And I feel like Plarium are constantly like just nerfing him with that ignore um, ally protection and shield buff all the time now. But yeah, so if we've got two lizard men, if enemies are killed by this skill while under a debuff, places block revive debuff on them. Nice. Um, and then if we've got three lizard men, deals 20% more damage for each debuff on the enemy. Stacks up to 100%. Wow. That is really, really nice. Really digging that A3. You know, A we hit, block revive potentially if they got the debuff and ignoring strength and ally protection and shields. Sick. So sick. So then we his A2, Dryonic Retribution. Attacks one of me three times, triple hitter. Nice, can be used for Fire Knight. Uh, each hit will ignore 10% of the target's defense for each debuff on the target. Stacks up to 50%. It's a little bit like Constantine. Constantine, um, for those that don't know, he was an awesome but very underrated legendary. I th was he Banner Lords? Nope. He was Sacred Order. Um, but yeah, very, very underrated. Could absolutely slam. And he had all of this ignore for each debuff, um, ignore defense for each debuff on the enemy. So I feel like Teox is a way upgraded version of Constantine and Constantine as well. Like, I feel so bad for him. He only got like two months limelight and that was it. Then he was completely shut down. Uh, so yeah, um, on the target, stacks up to 50%. Each hit also has also increases this challenge attack by 10%. Wow. Wow. And it stacks up to 30%. So obviously we're going to get 30% extra attack just from our first hit off this. So you probably want to open with the A2 for pve and then use the a3 and then grants an extra turn if we kill the enemy as well wow <laughs> guerrilla tactics on the a1 attacks one enemy two times the ally with the highest crit damage will team up and join in with the attack sweet the ally joining the attack will use their default skill i mean if you've got so if you can i mean this guy, I think, like Arena, Hydra, all dungeons, he's going to be pretty strong. Um, but yeah, like for Arena, if you can, bring in two DPS champions. And, you know, Teox is going to make sure that you drop them. The damage dealt by this champion and the joining, uh, sorry, the ally joining the attack will be increased by 10 cents for each debuff on the target. Stack up to 100%. I think. It'd be really cool to bring in uh, Fushan. So he has... Oh, no. Oh, damn. I thought it was his A1. Does anyone else... I think... I'm trying to think if there's like a lizard man that's got an A1 Necmo. But, yeah, it's not really going to help. Damn. Yeah, maybe Krisk. I mean, Krisk, yeah. Yeah, that is a broken A1. So, yeah, obviously, we'd pair up really nice with Krisk. Again, Void Legendary. Of course, we don't have him in the account. And I can't remember who was the other champions. It was a mythical. And what faction were they? Demon Spawn. Nice. Really, like, this is a really interesting look. Um, sort of reminds me of Hellboy. Sort of the physique and the horns. But yeah, very, very different to the rest of the champions in the game. But... I like it. I think he looks he looks cool. What about his other form as well? It's so important to me. Okay. <laughs> he reminds me of um probably quite niche, but if anyone's a spawn fan out there, the comic books, he looks like this clown in that. Um yeah, not not such a big fan of the second form, but the first form looks very cool. So it's a support, support mythical. And supports have always got so much going on in their kit. So his first passive. When this champion loses 30% HP or more in a single turn, deals damage to the attacker to 30% of this champion's max HP. Okay, so you're going to have to stack HP on this dude. Uh, also, when this champion loses 30% of their HP or more in a single turn, places a shield buff on them equal to 30% of this champion's max HP for two turns. All right. Yep, stack that HP on him. Thief of Joy on the A3. So attacks one enemy, steals 100% of the target's turn meter, also puts the target's skills on cooldown. 
Nice. Very, very cool. I like it. Agony overwhelming. Shouldn't it be overwhelming agony? That's definitely the wrong way around. I think there's a typo. Okay, so he's A2. Attacks all enemies, removes all buffs from enemies and places block active skill debuff on them for two turns. Block active skills is a very, very strong buff, especially for arena. It can be so annoying. Also steals 20% of the turn meter from each enemy under block active skills. Wow. I mean, this guy is insane. Like, I'm really digging this kit. Stealing lots of turn meter. Um, just sounds like he's just going to be like flying off, just whizzing around. And then Stoke Angish attacks one enemy two times. Each hit decreases the target's defense by 2%. Nice, stacks up 20%. And this is different. This is different from drop defense. So you can bring in drop defense and this and get even more ignore defense. That is sick. Uh, each hit also has 10% to steal the targets. Uh, 10 meter. Broken. Just broken. I mean, I really do like it. Like, it's a really interesting kit. Just sounds like he's just going to be constantly just like whizzing around doing laps on the enemy. So his passive in his second form, The Last Laugh, has a 100% chance to reflect all bomb debuffs placed on this champion back to an attacker. I think this is pretty niche. Um, I don't know if there's maybe a new boss coming out that may throw out bombs. I can't really think, I don't think there's any bosses that do bombs to our cell there. Maybe Bommel. I think Bommel might do bombs, but I don't know. It's been so long since, you know, Bomb will now just fall all over me. Uh, also has a 30% chance to reflect all other debuffs placed on the champion back to an attacker. That is so sick. Heals the champion by 20% of their max HP whenever an enemy is killed by a bomb debuff. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A Plarium planning for bombs to come back? I don't know. A3, killer on core. Heals the champion by 50% of their max HP. Places weakened debuff on all enemies for two turns, then grants an extra turn. Nice. Explosive Showtopper. Attacks all enemies, places two bomb debuffs on all enemies for two turns. Instantly detonates all bombs on enemies with stone skin buff or enemies whose HP is less than this champion's HP. Nice. And obviously if you're stacking HP on him, it's difficult though because bombs... the Bomb damage scales off attack. So do you go and he and like here, he's a HP champion. Um and you kind of want to build HP on him. Maybe you go for a hybrid build with HP and attack. Um, but then you need accuracy to land bombs. So that's a little bit confusing to me. But um yeah, I definitely feel that I guess because bombs do scale up damage on stone skin and so, you know, sometimes it's just obvious if a team's going to be running stone skin. But um, it's it's interesting. I just don't know how it's going to work. Then places a stun debuff on one turn on any enemies who had their bomb debuff detonated. So he's doing bombs. He's throwing out stuns. Um, it's like a strange way to strip people and also do damage. But yeah, I just don't see how it's going to work. Um, volatile Performer on his a is his A1. Attacked one enemy two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a bomb debuff for two turns. Heals this champion by 10% of their max HP for each de uh, bomb debuff placed. So attacked one enemy two times. But each hit has a 50% chance of placing bomb debuff for two turns. I'm not so keen on that. It's very 50-50, ironically. Um, yeah, I, if it was maybe a bit more consistent... To be honest, I feel like it should just be 100% because otherwise kind of a not a very good bomb champion, to be honest. So, I mean, he's, he's, I'm sure he's going to be pretty good. Um, he sounds like a really interesting champion. You guys let me know your thoughts on these guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in the video soon. Peace.